get started. Yeah. We've got uh, critical mass and lots of people here. So great to see everybody again. Um, thank you for coming. And, and uh, I'm glad we could have a little reunion here and, and wrap this up. Um, so I'm going to turn it over first to Jameson to give some opening remarks, and then we'll proceed from there. Well, super quick. Uh, basically, two words. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your talents on this uh, project with us. Project isn't the right word. Communication is approach. Project start man. This is going to be an ongoing deal. So I want to just thank you for, for help on that. Um, as you know, this was out for public comment. We wanted to bring those comments back to you all for your feedback, but also to talk through the draft report so that you can see that um, how your input is reflected in that in that product. Um, and it's going to be an ongoing product, and we're going to get to use it really quick on several different things. And, you know, the conversation around Franklin Road and Franklin Boulevard, rather, is, is starting to heat up a little bit. Um, we are in um, the process of determining, you know, what does LTD do for the next 50 years? So how we integrate with rural services, how we identify different services, all this place, all this is foundational to that. So again, I want to thank you for it. Uh, we'll get your feedback. We'll take it back to SPC, and then we'll take it to our board. You know, you know if there's no fatal flaws in it, you know, we'll take it, take it to that board for that process. And we just wanted to take the time to to go over it with you all to make sure that you know that we value all of your input and it's reflected in the work. Thank you. Thanks, James. Want well, to put up the agenda? Um, it's possible. Well, it was just working. Of course. <laughs> Uh, I can just tell you what the agenda is. Uh, we're so we're going to talk through the actions that have been taken since we last met, and then we'll have a summary overview just to review the framework, which I know you've seen. Um, and then we'd like to have a little bit of a conversation about how we do continuous improvement and benchmarking for the framework. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, the future of this oral group. So before we do any of that, though, I was hoping we could um, start with a little bit of a refresher round of introductions. Um, and of course, we have our, our newest person who's joining us today, uh, Dave. And so I wanted to start with Dave Roth, give you guys a chance to meet Dave as Tom is no longer with LTD and Dave has, been, has stepped into the role. So please. Yeah, so um, just really quickly, my name is Dave Roth. I'm the new director of uh, mobility planning and policy. And uh, taking over for Tom, who recently retired. I've, I just joined LTD about seven weeks ago. Um, and um, just quickly about me. So I'm actually from Eugene. I grew up here in um, uh, grad school at U of O, working for the city of Eugene as a transportation planner. Um, many years ago and uh, left back in about 2010, 2011 um, to take a role in Vancouver, BC. I was working for TransLink um, for a couple of years and uh, ended up coming back to Oregon. Most recently, I was working for the city of Tiger as their principal transportation planner. So I've been in the metro region since uh, 2013. And it's good to be back. I'm in the transition uh, phase right now. We're actually moving family back here next weekend. Um, so it'll be good to be, uh, have the whole family here and uh, have to be relocated. But really excited about this role with LTD. Um, obviously, there's a lot of change happening at LTD right now. And uh, this, this work is reflective of that. And, and I'm uh, pretty excited to, to see uh, what you all have been engaged on. I think this will bear fruit on a lot of our work going forward. So uh, thank you. Thanks, Dave. Um, we just, I know we all don't know who we are, but I thought it would be good to just a quick introduction. So again, Josh Shank with Infra Strategies. I've been part of this uh, work since the inception and I've really enjoyed it. And uh, glad to see all of you again. Hi, everyone. I'm Emma. Good to see everyone. Um, Nothing much has changed for me since I saw you in December. I got a haircut. Uh, so we are thank you. But nice to see you guys. Hi, um, I'm 
DJ. Again, I work at the University of Oregon, and it's good to be here. It feels like we were here like a week ago, <laughs> yeah. just sitting in this exact space. <laughs> I'm uh, Phil Barrington. I work for CDC Management Corp uh, here in town, and I did get my hair cut as I was. <laughs> Hello, David Hill, um, with Tribal One now. I was with Maritime Hotel Management and transitioned to a new role in economic development for my tribe, the Coquel Indian tribe, and our business arm of the tribe called Tribal One. Good to be here. I'm Amber Kalel. I have the honor to chair this committee, so welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm with Systems West Engineers. I also sit on the Springfield Chamber Board and the Wyoming Foundation Board. And welcome back, Dave. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Seth Sadowski. Um, great to be back. And for work, I work for the Oregon Department of Envir Environmental Quality, but I think I'm here because I ride the bus regularly. <laughs> Uh, Daniel, I am the marketing coordinator at Bike Friday, a local bike manufacturer, um, and I was lucky enough to work with uh, Amber as vice chair, and I was barely able to get a haircut this <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Melinda Preciado, Venezuela Chair Pacific Coast USA, and um, sadly, I'll be leaving this community and the oh. state next week. I'll be moving to Arizona. Miss everybody, yeah. and healthy. <laughs> All the roads are closing in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's so hot there. It's so my friend that is. Can't go. She said that about grandfather. Oh, no. She'll be back. Is your is your crown valid there, or what's the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is your crown valid there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm totally okay with it. Okay. <laughs> I'll be winning the national. My name is Linda Dugan. Um, I'm on the Southeast uh, Neighborhood Transportation Committee. Um, I was a special ed teacher for 40 years, so I'm very interested in making sure that there is inclusion with uh, people who are disabled and also the elderly. And, and then I have a son who refuses to drive. He wants to ride the bus, so he's been riding the bus since he went to junior high school, and he's 3.30 now, so <laughs> he's a dedicated bus rider. Oh, I'm, I'm Matt Walsh, I'm with Lane Transit District. Joe Corbett, the Lane Transit District. Kelly Brown, with Lane Transit District. Cammie Harris, the Lane Transit District. All right, gang's all here. So uh, we wanted to, first of all, make sure that you've signed in if you haven't done that, mm -hmm. uh, so we can make sure you get your stipend. And uh, we're gonna kick it off. Emma's gonna talk a little bit about the actions that have been taken since we last saw you, and just go through the project milestones generally. So we can go to the next slide. Also, I've been told to remind you guys there's lots of pizza in the back, <laughs> so you guys can go grab food and shout out and be offended. Um, we don't want it to go to waste. So we um, did our sixth meeting in December of 2023, which feels like last week. Um, and since then, we've been busy. We um, convened a round table with community-based organizations. Um, many of those organizations we were put in contact with based on the connections from the CSC. So I think David had put us in contact with some books and some other and, and being filled and also given some suggestions. And the purpose of that round table was to supplement um, the information that we received from the CSC, then also the public survey that we did, because we recognized that um, the survey was um, not as representative of LT writers. And so um, meeting with CEOs who have staff that work with a variety of different populations was just one mechanism for making sure that those folks and um, what's important to them and their interests uh, were captured. Um, we'll go over in, in the next slide of who participated and what we discussed, but we also met with the LTD executive team and the LTD marketing team to kind of go over how to kind of preview the framework and what was coming out of it and get their reactions because we didn't want to 
recommend anything that wasn't going to actually be implementable or wasn't understood by the staff that would ultimately be responsible for this. Do folks have their I don't know if you um, and then we did a two week public comment period, um, and that was after the CSC had viewed the draft. Uh, and that public comment period closed. Uh, we presented to the Strategic Planning Committee, which is an LTD uh, subcommittee, and got their comments. And James mentioned we'll be going back to them very soon and then hopefully bringing a final framework to the board. And so if you can go to the next slide. Oh, other way. direction. There we go. So this was um, who we had participation from during the half day round table. And we had invited other folks, um, but these were the organizations that were able to attend or we did follow up. Um, calls with uh, staff from these groups. Um, it took place here. Um, and ex if we could go to the next slide, we can just provide a... Okay, so in addition to a lot of the content that should be familiar with you, um, we talked about the guiding principles to get their feedback. We talked about kind of the purpose of the framework, but we also wanted to get their experience um, because a lot of these groups do conduct community engagement and are experts in community engagement. And so we had a conversation about what are successful characteristics of that. Um, we were pleased to see that a lot of the content and feedback that they gave us, which is summarized here, was echoed during the CSC. So um, I think that was reassuring. And I think that the CBO roundtable was used to um, add in things that we hadn't heard from the CSC. So, I really liked the phrase, nothing about us without us. That was something that one of the individuals said that they practice in their um, organization, which is a direct services provider. Um, and again, themes like the direct dialogue with the users that are going to be affected, not relying on one method to engage folks, um, working with CBOs as an extension or a, a resource um, to getting access to those members. Um, but then also the sharing data with other organizations who would also benefit. I think that was um, something new that we heard uh, because a lot of these groups work with the same population. So they were really interested in the LTD survey data that we had, and they felt that they would also benefit from that analysis. So that uh, it was kind of like a new, it was kind of like a new connection that we were able to start to share that information. So that was really positive. But then again, closing the loop of feedback, and anticipating changes in demographics. So thinking a little bit ahead in terms of not only is how does LTD engage with the groups that they serve now, but how will they engage with the groups that are projected to um, be here in the future or something that we heard. Uh, next slide, please. So then we presented a draft of the framework to the strategic planning committee. And these were some of um, the things that we heard from them. Overall, they were impressed with the results of the CSC. Uh, they did feel it was uh, important to call out that while it is a good practice to engage with potential opposition respectfully, to anticipate that not all may be willing to engage in a respectful manner. So just having that um, kind of preparation in mind. Um, and then really taking the position that regardless of the funding model for LTD, that it was the belief that public transit really benefits the community and is owned by the entire community. Um, and then there was a suggestion of um, having a liaison to bridge gaps. This was coming from a member who was um, in their professional career, did a lot of marketing and engagement, and this was a practice that they utilized. But I think the consensus was the framework um, looked really promising, but again, and we've heard this repeatedly, the group is in the pudding, so what's next, right? Um, next slide. So this is a sample of public comments that we got. So during that two week uh, period where anyone could submit a public comment online or also in at the stations, these are just a sampling of comments that we received. Um, we, I think, had overall positive comments. We. The next slide I'll give you um, shows how we incorporated some of those comments and actually made changes to the document. 
Um, but then again, I think it's pretty clear that it's um, a thoughtful effort, but it, it, it's how how is this going to bear fruit, right? What's the next step is what people are most interested in. Um, so if we go to the next slide, these are some of the actions that we took on um, from the public comments. So we got really good kind of clear feedback that the definition of stakeholders needed to be more delineated. Um, there were some questions on LTD ridership demographics that we provided that clarification in the framework itself. Um, some confusion of what the vision was for ambassadors. And so we provided clarification on what that would look like. Um, we got feedback that it's not just translating materials, but also using a cultural lens for communication when looking at, at materials and how, we're commu and how LTD is communicating. And then again, LTD not solely relying on technology. Um, we also got feedback that it was a really dense document. I don't know if you guys felt that way too, but we addressed that by making an executive summary that really tried to consolidate and simplify the language. And then we also got feedback that in addition to continuous improvement, which is something we're going to talk about today, um, there should be some sort of time frame that LTD is committing to, um, to actually reevaluate and think about uh, the framework comprehensively and um, think about how to actually make any sort of adjustments. And so we talked with LTD and established that five year time frame for this. Um, and so Joshua is going to go over the uh, draft final framework, proposed, I guess we're going to propose a final framework, um, and then we'll get into talking more about continuous improvement and metrics and things like that. Or does anyone have any questions actually based on what I talked about? Okay. All right, uh, no questions or reactions to that so far? Okay, I'm just going to breeze through the framework. I know that you've all seen it, um, but I just wanted us to have a chance. We wanted to have a chance for all of you to see it collectively um, um, so we can go through uh, what it means, and, and, and that way we can have a better discussion about the future. So again, the, the purpose that we all agreed on for what the framework would be would be to improve interactions with the communities in the region, guide LTD in future engagement, standardize the LTD practices, um, and that this would be something that is not just an LTD internal document, but is really a public document to work with everybody on uh, specific engagement plans for different initiatives, not just projects, but any initiative that should come through LTD. Next slide. So uh, the idea of the framework is that there are these three kind of core principles that we adhere to, right? And some of them we've talked about already. One, that this is a living document. It is not set in stone and we're always gonna be looking to improve. Um, and we're gonna talk more about that today. Two, that it is a community driven document, meaning it was built by you guys as representatives <laughs> of the community and that it can be changed by you guys. Um, and the third, it is inherently flexible and that's a little different than a living document. What that means is, you're not just saying, well, this is how we do things rigidly. You're saying, this is, these are the suggestions, this is the framework for how we're gonna do things. We understand that there are always different situations, different factors that might lead us to do things slightly differently. But this is not intended to be rigid in the time when you're engaging, and it's not intended to be rigid in the long term either. So the guiding principles for community engagement that are in the plan uh, we've we've divided them into these four groups, right? Style, content, process, and intent. And these are the principles that you came up with, and we distilled into uh, what, what we thought made uh, the most sense for for readers and and as a guide going forward. So under style, the idea of two-way dialogue that came up a lot. The idea that it's accessible to everyone, respectful, which as we know, not always going to happen, but certainly the goal. Uh, active listening. Be something that, that we talked about a lot in this group, uh, that the idea that this would be data-driven, that when we go out and, and talk to community, it's based on actual data, that we're clear about what we're trying to achieve. And this idea of fiscal transparency came up a lot, that we're going to try to make sure that when we're communicating, we're being honest about what the actual uh, financial issues are, not trying to hide any of that. And being outcome-oriented in terms of the engagement, not trying to win every battle, but instead trying to think about what are we trying to get to and how do we achieve that best. Uh, under process, we talked about the idea of a feedback loop, meaning that whatever we're hearing, 
we then are, not, are reporting back, not just that we heard it, but what actions were taken or not taken based on the feedback we received. Benchmarking continuous improvement, not just for the plan that we're gonna talk about today, but that, that is a general process rule about how we're gonna conduct engagement. Uh, and then that the process itself is adaptable. And then finally under intent, that the public engagement should be meaningful, not box checking exercises where we're just saying, oh, look, we did it, but that we're doing it with the purpose of, of, of actually trying to get real feedback that is incorporated and that makes the project or initiative better. And that the community comes first. The, the goal of engagement, the goal of what we're trying to achieve here is to serve the community. Uh, and that's the priority. Next slide. So the essential practices that are in the plan uh, that we saw that, that this group developed uh, in order to facilitate better engagement, understanding the demographics of the region and, and especially the riders and affected groups, mapping to the stakeholders to consider how interests, influence, and needs may differ. So spending the time to understand what the stakeholders might want beforehand, doing your work beforehand, uh, before you come in with any kind of uh, engagement strategy, and then developing the tailored approach to engagement to support the needs of the various communities. So recognizing that not, not one size fits all, and you have to do it differently depending on who you're talking to. So the tailored approach begins with starting with, what are you trying to achieve? I, mean, I think that that was something we hope hope to hammer home as a team during this process. If we haven't we haven't achieved what we're trying to do, but what are we trying to do? That's the start starting point. Um, and then, okay, if that's the larger goal and we can agree on that, then what are the different issues, policies, or processes that we can analyze to figure out how to achieve that? What assumptions are we bringing in on both sides? What are, what are we starting with as our assumptions for how this is going to proceed? And then in, inclusion. So who's going to be impacted and are they being included? The key question that you have to ask with every engagement. Who's missing and, and how can we do something different to make sure that they, brought, they are brought to the table? Uh, how are we intentionally engaging multiple perspectives? So not just focusing either on the folks who are the problem or the folks who are rah, rah, yay, but actually making sure that we're getting all the perspectives that are necessary. And then there's going to be barriers participation for different groups, for different people. How are we addressing that? How are we getting ahead of that to make sure those people can have a voice? So, no? okay. Yeah. So, can we go to the next slide? No, the other way. So, we talked about the following strategies for community engagement, and we have this one building on another because the solid foundation that we all discussed and we put in the framework is that you got to work to build trust first as a, uh, a prelude prerequisite to absolutely everything else you're doing so working to build trust being something that ltd always needs to be doing in order to then be successful when they go to another the next strategy which is engaging in collaborative honest and transparent conversations can't have one without the other, right? You have to build trust in order for people to believe that you're going to be collaborative, honest, and transparent. And then you have to prove it by actually following through on that, communicating clearly on what people need to hear, not just telling the story that you want to tell or spinning it in the way you want it to be, but clearly to what actual people really need to hear for them to understand the project and for them to participate effectively in the discussion. And then finally, as a capstone, the focus on riders. Uh, being the ultimate goal of what we're trying to achieve here. Um, if, the, if, the, if the purpose is to take care of writers and help writers, then that has to be where you kind of wind up with any discussion and initiative. Um, and then to go back a slide to priority strategies and tactics, um, these are, remember we had that whole conversation about strategy and tactics, we had a lot of stuff here on the board. We tried to distill it into these categories uh, one of the things, a lot of discussion about engaging government stakeholders, utilizing that asset and, and, and those folks as allies as you go out there is something that LTD can do better. Getting out ahead of the story so that it's the first time people hear about it is not the, the wrong message that we're out there talking about it before people are coming to engagements so that they have some idea what's going on and that the story is in part being told by LTD. 
being present with writers as being something that they're always seeking to do, whether it's simply by riding the bus regularly, having board members ride the bus more regularly, or being a, a part of the system. Uh, LTD needs to be out there experiencing the same thing that other people are experiencing and engaging potential, potential opposition. So seeing ahead a little bit around the corner to see, okay, who are the potential people who might be opposed to this and working with them before it becomes a problem rather than waiting for them to raise their hand. So that's the, 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 the way that the framework um, turned out. I feel like it was an amazing piece of work. I'm really happy with all that went into it. I hope you feel similarly and based on the feedback we received, I think you do. Um, what we wanted to do next, unless there are any questions on this, is talk about continuous improvement and benchmarking for the framework, but any clarifications or remaining questions on the framework as, as it came in? If we have some additions to like the, um, the groups, um, the stakeholders, mm -hmm. um, just when, whenever that's an opportunity, I have a couple that I think should be in there. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can give, you can, we can talk about it now and I can, that's a fairly simple thing with looking at the existing groups and how it fits in. Otherwise, I thought it was, was great. Yeah, let's. I'm really um, optimistic. Good. Good changes. Um, so uh, under the tribes, um, I know that um, the Kalapuya are not a federally recognized tribe, but they are part of, um, the um, Grand Ron, but I just thought since we are on California land, um, it might be <laughs> good to have them listed. And they do have a website, and they have mm -hmm. tribe. I, I know one of the elders, so they're, they're very present in our community. Okay. Um, the other is that, um, unless I didn't see it in the list of um, what you're calling it. I actually did read the whole thing. Good. <laughs> Took me two days, but. Um, we were writing it, hopefully, but, hoping that someone would read it. So. Sorry, can I just clarify in the first comment? So we have that, we have the, I don't know, Coquille? Coquille? Indian tribe calls out, but did you want it? Was, That's not, I'm talking about Calapuya. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> the Calapuya tribe. Okay. Different tribe. Different tribe. Sorry about that. And this is Calapuya land. Got it. <laughs> And if you go to different functions in our community, they will say that at the beginning of the meeting. Mm -hmm. so, um, the other is under healthcare and social service providers. And I didn't really see a designation for um, uh, supportive shelters, LG rest stop um, program, Nightingales, which is in my neighborhood, uh, which is a nonprofit that's part of the Eugene um, rest stop program. Um, Nightingale, you said? Yeah, that's just one place, but it's the Eugene Shelter um, Rest Stop Program, is what it's called. And it entails several different places. And also, um, Peace Village is under um, I think the name of the group. Anyway, there are other groups that um, have housing and for the unhoused and shelter care. and. And, um, uh, you know, that I, I don't know how you want to list that, but they're not all shelter care. There's all kinds of different organizations. You know, you know what we'll do, Linda, is um, we have a new person on staff named Sarah Koski, and Sarah is doing a lot of community outreach for us with nonprofit organizations, but specifically with the unhoused. And what I'll do is talk to her, and we will integrate her list into That's our okay. list here. Okay. Yeah, sense. yeah. Because also, um, I don't know if you have St. Vincent de Paul on there, but um, in my neighborhood also is a, a family um, transitional housing uh, through St. Vincent de Paul. They have housing other places in town too. So I just think there's more people for that list. Okay. And I think it's important. The reason I think it's so important that they're included is my friend who's on the board of Nightingale. She said that uh, LTD buses are totally instrumental in their program because those people use their passes and go to you know to get mm -hmm. showers at the y and you know um they're really um, reliant on ltd services so i think 
at least St. Vincent's and the different um, rest stop places should be up. Great. And there's a name for the whole for the rest stop place, but I don't know. I can't remember right now. It's an organization, but thanks, Pat. Yeah, any other? Yeah. Any other? Uh, just the spelling on the Grand Ronde and Lower Umpqua. I don't think like grammar spelling. <laughs> so when I first read the framework, I think I had a lot of recommendations, but it's Umpqua, there's no L on the end of Umpqua, and then it's Grand, like it's a, no Grande, but just Grand. Yeah. And I will say, yeah, I echo the Kawabuya tribe, the yeah. descendants of the Grand Ronde and um, Celeste tribe here. Right, yeah, Celeste too. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. So what we were hoping to do uh, with our time today is to talk through uh, continuous improvement and benchmarking uh, as the first exercise. So if you go to the next slide, uh, what we've, the commitment that LTD has made is that we're embracing the concept of continuous improvement, uh, which means that this is just the beginning of a renewed effort at better community engagement and that we are going to learn as we go along. So that's what every human being does, right? And that's what we're supposed to be doing and that's what we're gonna have this organization do. So what we want to talk about is, uh, I'm hearing from you about two key things. One, what can LTD do to better understand how well it is performing, right? So what are the things that LTD should be doing? Um, as this process gets underway to get feedback specifically on how well it's implementing and fulfilling the promise and the aims of this framework. And then second, are there specific benchmarks or metrics that LTD should be thinking about or using to demonstrate that progress? Uh, things that we should be tracking from the very beginning to say, okay, we started here, how we do? Um, because these are the, the ways that we'll, we can see LTE understanding um, better uh, where the changes are, what, the, what needs to be made, what changes need to be made to the framework as it goes along. They have to be able to understand how well they're doing and they have to be able to understand the progress they're making against certain benchmarks. So any initial thoughts on ways they can understand it or specific benchmarks and metrics? Yeah. So, um, so to the first question, I guess one of the um, this is more qualitative than quantitative, but I sort of feel like everybody involved in trying to figure out how to deliver transit well should. Once in a while, try to go someplace they don't usually go and see what the service is really like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so much of our, I mean, of course, it makes sense that so much of our transit is dedicated to getting people to and from our downtowns during the regular working day. But, you know, I feel like that is, um, based on a model that's not and to and from the university obviously that gets a lot of use but you know i think it it's you know trying to go to the hospital on the bus is shocking um you know things like that and i think that's a, sort of a qualitative thing to understand how you're performing um you know in terms of quantitative benchmarks obviously you've got Ridership data is a huge, a huge issue there, but um, there are probably are other good quantitative ideas. I was just sort of that qualitative thing right there was a big one to make. So when you when you say that, just to clarify, so what 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 is it that you would like to see that would indicate that LTD is doing a better job of addressing? Uh, engagement on that issue, right? Like the, addressing the fact that, because I understand exactly what you're saying. Like there's so many times I've tried to take transit to places that are not the typical places and it's really difficult. Yeah. How, so what can LTD do to show, pro do to show progress on, on engagement on that topic? 
I mean, I guess the, the really thing, the thing is, is, is there a mark, you know, is it there's no transit because I chose a weird place to try to go that nobody else wants to go to? Or is it there's no transit because there's a big gap in our system that we need to figure out how to fix? Yeah. So, so part of what LTD but, could, oh, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. <clears throat> And then, I mean, I guess that's the other thing is, you know, you get on the bus and you talk to the other people on the bus, and that's a good time to work on engagement. Right, right. So part of so part of the framework is, as we talked about, is is being on, being present, being with riders, and you're saying that when doing that, that's a great way to get feedback on how well engagement is going, yeah. and in particular, maybe. Doing that on some of the less traveled routes might be a good strategy. Or, or, or even, you know, like, you know, if it were me, you know, I know the routes between my house and my office really well. And when I take try to take the bus somewhere else, it's a little bit more of a a different community, a different environment. Everything is, you know, it yeah. you learn a lot then. Yeah. Whereas, you know, between my office and my house, I've got my earbuds in and I'm not paying attention. Right. You've done it a million times. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Other thoughts? Yeah. yeah, in terms of um, the framework portion, could you break this down into a scorecard? I'm going a very different direction than he is from a more macro level. Um, you have an internal and external scorecard that are the same and internally the staff grades themselves on whatever initiative marketing campaign project at hand and then they try to implement that same scorecard externally to those people who were you know brought in stakeholders or writers and then you compare and see what the gaps are and start asking those questions why and what comments um, I think that's something you can try over time. I think this is you're you're going to need to have data over several different projects, across several different time frames to start to really see where you're lacking. Um, but also from an implementation piece, the which is in the pudding. I think unless you have something really concise and simple to be able to have in front of you, like everybody, like and we're all tracking the same target. Otherwise, there's what's the target, what's the expectation, right? And so there's like an alignment there. Um, so that's my thought. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I, I know I'm not supposed to reveal all the time that I'm a New Yorker when I live on the West Coast, but I remember mayor, that mayor when I was a kid at Koch who used to say, how am I doing? It's kind of like what you're saying is like, when we're doing it, it's not just that we're doing it, but how are we, that's a good time to ask, how, how well are we doing? And um, and get feedback in the moment from the people that you're talking to, and then you can use that as a benchmark against what we're seeing internally to see if there is a gap. I like that idea. That's, that's great. Other thoughts? Yeah, um, I think that LTD could continue to adjust the way they are taking feedback, especially by prioritizing the strategies and tactics and looking at those throughout the year. And then I think like a longer term goal would be setting a time to check in to ask all these questions again mm -hmm. and see like kind of what's changed um, over the past two years or something like that. Um, for the second question, I was thinking um, just a, a positive metric would be more increased data that's more representative of writers and um, Eugene Springfield community that are actually doing the um, engagement pieces. So attending these programs or um, filling out those quizzes, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. Sorry, can I ask a clarifying question? So the, the benchmark or the metric would be, does LTD actually have data that when they parse it by demographics and other things, that that data is representative of their riders or 
Yeah, I would say both the ridership and um, the community as a whole, because then you can kind of see, oh, maybe there is more of an increase in those populations that we weren't reaching in the first place, which is something we talked about a lot, like who's not riding the bus. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I see. So yeah. seeing if the ridership, right, the the demographics of the ridership, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Like, has the demographic? Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, Linda. Um, it, it's kind of related to this, but um, and not to dwell too much on the past. But in the past, <laughs> I have gone to many of the kind of open houses or whatever that LTD had around town, and um, not only me, but many, many people were surprised that we were going there to find out what LTD was doing and being told whether that there wasn't an opportunity, I mean, zero, because we ask zero opportunity to actually have any input or any um, questioning or yeah. rebuttal about what was in the plants. And I, I think that turned a lot of people off, to be honest. And um, so any improvement, if, if you have any kind of open house kind of thing like that, is to actually let allow time for people to have input. Oh yeah, really. Yeah, that would be, that would, so it, it, what you're saying is, just as you would in a, the engagement, as we talked about the framework, right? You want that, that input to be meaningful, and you want it to be silly, like not not just that it has to exist, but it has to actually be incorporated and, and responded right. to. But also with respect to how well are we doing when we're, when we're doing what Amber's suggesting and kind of getting out there, how well are we doing on this framework? That is also input that we want to make sure we're really incorporating and bringing in. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, this kind of gets to the, the second question and maybe a little bit uh, like what Seth was, was talking about. Um, being a, uh, being a little more qualitative about some of the assessments that you do too. I mean, it's easy to kind of go down this rabbit hole of looking for metrics and maybe count the number of heads that come into the room and giving feedback or testimony or input um, or been told uh, what it is, but you miss sort of the, the story that they are trying to tell you in part. So I think it kind of gets to a little bit of conflict about the feedback loop as part of the process of their guiding principles and the data driven about content. So it's a hard thing to do to where you can, Ed Koch might say, how am I doing? And somebody can tell them, hey, Mary, you're doing great. 73% of the people polled say you're doing a great job. But that may belie something that's underneath you know, the 27% or even of the 73%, there's some discontent or something else that's, not, that's being missed. Um, so I think there is a qualitative piece that is always going to be part of what's what I'm impressed by is this sort of feedback loop and even asking the questions that brought us here as part of this process is an extraordinary thing. And as you went through all the, the framework elements and put them up there, I was thinking, oh my gosh, if it, instead of saying LTD, it said city of whatever or whatever other jurisdiction, hand this to them and say you should be doing this too mm -hmm. so it's super important for your your partners the governmental partners that LTE has to be doing something similar as well because otherwise you may be doing really great outreach yeah. and, and getting the the pulse of the community what they want but your partner who may mm -hmm. may actually have the dollars in hand or something is not where they're missing the, this well and the people may not be able to necessarily distinguish between those, right? Like uh, the average person isn't going out there. Oh, I understand that's LTZ and that's the city, and that's what it's two different things. Like I think of government services as government services. Right? Mm -hmm. But I, I, you're interested. It was interested in the first point you made. It's kind of like, if I'm understanding you correctly, that data is important, but it's one input, and it's not. You can't rely on quantitative data as being the only input because it'll go down the wrong path. So it's it's an input. It's useful. But that doesn't mean that we aren't also collecting other non quantitative data that's highly relevant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of on that same same line is that 
I, I know in the past anyway that ridership is a major data, <laughs> you know, but um, I also think that different different things influence that ridership and um, you have to have it available for people to use it. And so if it's not available, you're not gonna have, you know, for example, the bus in my neighborhood, we have two buses nearby and um, it's now switched to every hour. They understand we need bus drivers. <laughs> and at, at the event on Sunday, Jameson asked the person in front of me if he wanted to be a bus <laughs> And you see the signs on the buses. So I, you know. He didn't ask you? No, no, no. He, he knows I'm retired. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I just think that, so when it's only going every hour, my son who goes to, volunteers and volunteers in medicine takes him an hour and a half to get there, an hour and a half to get home. And then when you add in now that it's every hour rather than half hour. So you might lose some ridership during the, this time sure. when things have been cut back. So I think it's important to know, to use that ridership data and look at the circumstances and that if it's not there, people aren't gonna use it. So. And, and plus, it needs to be there for the people that need it uh, and that. Okay. Other thoughts? Yeah. Just one more thought. I think, you know, a lot of this is sort of um, internal and questioning, you know, LTD maybe um, performing things themselves. And there's almost like an internal focus. How are we doing it? But I, I think the ability for LTD to be flexible and responsive to things that are outside their control and are occurring in the community, decisions made by others. So kind of like I think somebody's talking about going to the hospital today. So hospital services have been consolidated over at Riverbend. Our our transportation system has been based upon the top and spoke system. And even some of the express services that people used to take employees in particular to get to Sacred Heart, um, those are not really available, nor are there kind of cross connections. So, uh, you know, I know this is probably done as part of route planning and, and you know, some bigger analysis is being done by LTE staff. But it just, I, I think it just behooves, you know, us all to be cognizant of the things that LTE has to respond to. So, yeah. Yeah, it's part of just you know the evaluation process of part of this whole thing. I would um I guess also add this is a really complex ecosystem that we're trying yeah. to understand how are we performing uh, you know in this in this ecosystem, right? And so I guess my ask to LTD LTD would be to, to break it down into something that we can choose. So are there categories, segments, divisions, whatever, that can actually be pieced off and evaluated on its own mm -hmm. to some degree. Because are we are we moving the needle overall? Yeah, but implementation plan, you're, you're gonna be doing this at piecemeal things as you go. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it's like, you can't just say, oh, you're, you're at a 50 and you wanna get to a 60. You know, you, you've got all of these pieces of the puzzle. And how do you how do you tangibly make that understood holistically? And I think we have a good start framework and the categories that we already have, but there's another level there that I feel like LTD needs to go to and do that work mm -hmm. and provide that and somehow get that feedback on those pieces so that they can actually see where they're weak and maybe where they're strong. Um, are you thinking like under, because the way that the framework is set up, there's the kind of overarching strategy of working to build trust that, and then under, nestled under that are a bunch of available tactics for getting to that, but you're almost, are you saying under the different um, strategies of working to build trust, like what are metrics that would fall under that, that would be indicative of that, that ladder up? No, not so much. Um, <clears throat> I see planning and refining very different than maybe user end 
individual experience, right? And I would think that the way LTD tackles those are very different as well. They're going to employ now the same framework at both, but you can't measure them the same. They're not the same. Right. And so what sectors of business do they want to measure? That's an LTD question. It's not a community question um, per se. And then how do they involve the community to measure that? Um, and so I, I'm getting back to the like, how does this become a reality? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Private business. Um, and so like, it's, I just think that there's, you're asking a really broad question and, it, and it's not going to be one thing. Yeah. And so what's, what's important? Using this framework is important. But how is it plot? Like, how is it going to be measured? I, you're not just going to say it's the framework that's going to get measured. It's how the framework gets used. It's going to measure and how it's used. It's going to be different for <clears throat> however many different activities and initiatives they have going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe looking at it um, on a, it's almost on a case by case basis. Like, okay, we 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 use the framework to engage on this particular initiative. So before we start, let's think about what would be a positive outcome that we might see from this and measure ourselves against that. Yeah, I mean, that's going to the very granular level, level and I'm not sure it's practical either. Okay. <laughs> so, um, which is why I was saying, I do think it's important to, to get categories. Yeah. Well, what would an example of a category be? <clears throat> um, you could just say LTD board, for example. It's just everyone knows there's an LTD board. You could have the community get their feedback on how they think the CSC is being framework is being used at the board level, and then you could have the board rate it, and you have a measurable number there, right? And maybe the board's right. Maybe it's being well received, and there's little issues there, and that's not an area of component that needs to be necessarily the universe. But maybe there's open houses and um, outreach programs that are being had currently, and we maybe have a laundry list of them that have occurred in the past. And the internal team ranks how they feel they've done at those. And the people who've gone, if there's a list, not a list, whatever, maybe you have another one and you do the same thing. How does this go? And you find out those gaps. But I don't think you can say what how you rank them, you can rank another. Area. They're just so different. Right. You're in different I stakeholders, see. different people, like different socioeconomic people at the yeah. table. Like, so I, I do think you need to break it apart. Okay. Other thoughts? Okay. Uh, so, what we wanted to do for our final exercise as group today. Um, is to talk a little bit about future and uh, what this looks like. Um, I was hoping to do this as kind of more of a roundtable discussion. I don't know if you ever played the game with your kids at Roses and Thorns, but that's uh, something that I used to do with my kids of saying, what happened to you that you like today? <laughs> what happened to you that I um, And this is, you know, we, we would like to know, okay, whether it's this group or any other group like this, uh, what do we want to learn from this experience about how we can operate it uh, in the future and, and how it could be more effective? So if we could go around, I think it would be great if everyone could participate, if that's possible, to say, what did you like about this experience and the CSC? And then if there are any opportunities for improvement for how LTD should do this kind of exercise in the future, conduct this in the future, both those would be really helpful uh, to us. So Linda, is it okay if we start with you? Sure. Um, I thought we had a good cross-section of people in the community representing on the board, I mean, on the, on the council. Um, I thought we did some really hard work, good work. Um, I'm very pleased with the product. Um, I'm, of course, looking forward to how it's going to be implemented. Um, and uh, I, I would like to see us continue from time to time if needed. You know, if 
if it's a, a time that things need to be looked at again or revised or additions or whatever. Um, I think it's been an opportunity for the, the public to have some input, which I really welcome because I I've been in Eugene 50 years and I've, <laughs> I've never felt as optimistic as I am about the input with LTD. And we'd like to see it with the cities too, <laughs> if we could do that. <laughs> we try. Great. Thank you. No thorns. <laughs> no thorns, huh? No, no, pizza's good too. <laughs> <laughs> could be better, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be hot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that <laughs> I think that um, the CSE editing was great. I think that there was some totally relevant things that were brought up over those meetings, and then there's been obviously those were cast aside because yeah, tonight is just. I think that it all just is going to be great. Definitely optimistic on everything. And of course, the new president that LT has is beyond amazing. So I think that, that helps. yeah, I definitely see uh, a lot of that negativity that the community complains about, whether it's important or not. <laughs> um, I think that it will be definitely getting better. I see it. Um, and um, so, like the question, the opportunities for improvement. Can you? Like, I mean, just if if, if LTD is going to undertake something like this in the future, or anything you might do differently, or you know, suggestions you might have for making it better. Um, I, I think this should definitely be taken up. Okay. And she said she could join us with Zoom. From Arizona, yeah. Yes, definitely. Anyhow. All right. Thank you. Um, so I really um, appreciated the group of people that we had here. I think we had a, a diverse group of uh, opinions and experiences that was really, really uh, useful. Um, but I think it would be great to have more meetings, whether more often during the same amount of time, longer meetings or just more meetings as a whole, or maybe like a, uh, something that continues uh, for like a, a specific amount of time. Because there is, uh, being that this is a live, you know, proposal, it, we can't, you know, even our opinions may change yeah. throughout the process. So it's good to continue to have that feedback. Or even during a meeting. Yeah, you know, I mean, once you learn a little bit more info, maybe you know. Um, and I think it would be great to also have maybe a few more people, maybe like 35, or I know that we're around like 25, is that correct? Um, I think, again, to get more of that, um, more, more of that feedback and that plus being longer meetings or more meetings, I think we would get just a little bit more out of it. That's all. Opportunity of improvement. Uh, then just did you mean more meetings, like because you said longer meetings, mm -hmm. but do you mean like on the same content uh, or yeah, like, uh, the same, like the same? You want to get more into the same, yeah, like, like go deeper, you know, go deeper, whether it's um, yeah, just the same amount of meetings, so just longer, but basically okay. just more time together, however, that split, um, to be able to really get down to you know. More details that it's intended maybe could be useful for. Maybe we need to have some CSC happy hours. You know? <laughs> <laughs> more time to go. Yeah. Well, uh, thank yeah. you. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think it was really great to get a big group, a big diverse group of people who care about our our areas transit and together to come up with ideas and share ideas and work on this framework. Um, I'm a little bit worried that we said, yeah, you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to do the other thing. And whenever LTD starts embarking on a project, 
they're gonna have this like they're gonna feel the staff are gonna feel like they've been given this big load of extra work. Mm -hmm. I don't really have an answer for that, but um, you know, I guess they'll just have to see how how it goes when they start trying to do it. Um, Pat, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I, I do. I, 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 I'm really glad you said that. And I know that the staff would be thrilled with some of this. But this is a, a mandate from our boss and from our board. And because we, we have to do, uh, we, have to, we have to do a better job engaging the community, right? And that's why we're all here. So it's what I believe will happen is that's all, this is all going to get integrated into what we do. So it's not a separate standalone project. It's just what we do and how we do it. And that's what I, I'm excited to get this first, what the first project is going to be off the ground because we're going to take this framework and use it. And then we're going to find out what works and what doesn't. And, and, and we're all going to learn from that. So I think in terms of workload, this is just going to be part of the process that we have to work through. But I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm going to tell my staff that somebody was looking out for it. Because so, that, because I, well, I also work for the public. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what it's like. Yeah. yeah. But thank you for that. But that, that's how I think we see it together, perhaps. Um, I guess one more thing, you know, we were just joking at the end of what Dan said about a CSC happy hour, but. Not necessarily a CSC happy hour, but I feel like having maybe having LTV planning staff go to various places at various times for various, you know, I don't know, you know, once once a month or something, you have some place where people are easily accessible, whether it's, you know, one of the brew pubs or one of the coffee shops or, you know, uh, a particular park on a particular day. Just, I feel like just um, those opportunities to show up and discuss things um, can be really helpful. Yeah. I know we talked about intercept events as being something that's in, I mean, that's in the framework, right? And trying to create those types of bonds with the community outside of the schedules or, or you know, official events is a way of building trust. So same thing applies to the the future of the CSC is what we're saying. Um, what did I like about CS, CSC? I would say that the people, for sure, just being able to connect with people that I haven't been to in this community, but, um, and their perspectives. I think an opportunity for improvement as the sessions went on, Felt like there's probably a lot of untapped potential at this table, this room table, this group. Um, the more I got to hear from everybody and learn about them, and generally who I also knew from the community in different roles. Um, so I'm not sure if there'd be a way we could facilitate some of these slightly different so that there was more opportunity for. Um, <coughs> People to really build on some conversations uh, and ideas in a, in a different manner, whether it be focused work sessions or work sessions by what you're most passionate about or most skilled for. Um, but I think there are probably some, yeah, some opportunities that we left at the table. So, what do you think the best way is to make sure we, we recapture those in the future? Yeah, I, I don't necessarily have all the answers, <laughs> um, but I I think probably facilitating it slightly differently. Um, and I don't know if that's time based or skill based or smaller work groups and coming back to the greater whole. But what we did was good, but I think there were probably better ways to get more out of people. Mm -hmm. I think there were probably not enough comments. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> I will echo a lot of what everybody on, uh, on the table has said. It's really, I think, for me, what I've enjoyed about it is the diverse cross section of the community. Um, people that I 
haven't interacted with um, in just day to day. Or, uh, I really come back to the piece that that sort of bottom of the pyramid, the trust piece, and sort of what Seth was saying is LTD showing up, even when they're not even supposed to be, or not supposed to be, but not intended to be in the room, but they're just part of the community and sort of interwoven in the fabric of events and um, tabling or marketing or outreach beyond sort of the, the four walls here. Um, I enjoy that there was food brought in for the meetings and just the hospitality of the LTV staff and the work that went into coordinate and behind the scenes logistics for putting a group like this together. And um, would just encourage the CSC continue with either the same folks or different sets of groups. I really enjoyed the stakeholder mapping, the story, stakeholder engagement, thinking about who in the community is um, on the list, but who's not at the table and, and who should be represented. So I just want to be on the record that that's not an all encompassing list. And so sort of an ever growing list of stakeholders and more important reason for it to be sort of to be in the community, out in the community um, to sort of continuous improvement, right? Continuous engagement. Um, not just for a specific project, but just being part of the community. Thank you. Yeah, I guess, um, <clears throat> kind of like what I was saying before, I think, um, let's see, let me back up. There are people, and some of whom have been represented on this group, um, that sort of feel agreed. Okay, they feel like, hey, LTV is an unelected board. Uh, we get taxed, whether I'm an employer, I'm an employee, and you know, they're just coming in my pocket. They don't see the benefit for them. And I think what was great about this process was the fact that it was done. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about trust at the bottom, I, I think it, you could have seen that one um, graphic instead of being a pyramid, almost like a circle. Because I think you, if executed properly, this whole process and this engagement can build trust. What ends up happening, I think, too often is that <clears throat> public agencies don't ever ask how mm -hmm. they're doing, what do you really think, tell me, it, it, it's, there's the box checking and all this stuff. And people feel as though they haven't been respected, their, their interests or wishes have not been heard or understood. And I think it has a corrosive effect upon governance and democracy in general. So I believe that having this process is a remarkable and great thing that every organization should do it. Pat can tell you, my wife probably tells me I continuous improvement is something we need to work on more and <laughs> all the time. But no, I think that's, that's true for all of us personally, but I think definitely organizationally and for a public entity, it's a great thing and it's to be commended. So if something comes from this about how business is conducted and the way staff kind of work and to be able to level out resource allocation, awesome. So that's a more important thing. Um, opportunity for improvement, I would just say, you know, guard against, you know, staff having gotten all this information kind of falling back into some sort of silo mm -hmm. of just, um, you know, an us and them or getting boxed about the ears by another agency or feeling overwhelmed. Um, you know, continuous improvement also means taking time for yourselves and uh, hopefully you, you relish and celebrate your own successes too. Because there have been a lot with LTV and this organization gets beat up far more than it should and we don't collectively recognize the success that we have here in our hometown. Um, I really enjoyed the, the meetings. I think being able to direct the impact on our community has been very cool. Um, this is a city I moved to from Texas, and so it's um, a big adjustment period for sure, but being able to be like excited and passionate about like the services here um, has been very cool. Um, I think an opportunity for improvement is just more uh, intentional space for alternative feedback um, throughout. And I think kind of an emphasis on it, intentional. So like we talked about, oh, we can talk 
we can email each other, we can have mm. group chats, you know, things like that. But I think um, when a structure is built, which is very similar to like how this was built, um, if you do that throughout, um, that can make for more intentional alternatives. Yeah. Um, maybe for people who are nervous to speak up in these group situations or um, might feel like they're going to get steamrolled by some of the louder voices in the spaces, um, stuff like that. And then I also want to suggest if a group like this were operating in the future, I, I do recall that we got a lot of applicants for this. Mm -hmm. And I do think there would be people continued, um, continuous amounts of people who would be able to provide an impact on LTD um, outside of ourselves as well. Um, and you know, if we had 12 more people talking about stakeholders and reflecting on our goals, um, I think that's a better um, method moving forward. Thank you. I really like, like what you said about alternative ways to get feedback because you're right, not everybody likes to speak in a public meeting in a, in, in a public sense in that direct way. But so it's like, it's so typical of transit agencies, right? To think like, oh, we'll offer free everyone together and have opportunity for feedback. And like, there's many other ways for people to communicate and thinking about all those ways is part of what we should all be doing. So it's great. Um, so that's, uh, that's most of what we wanted to accomplish today. Um, I don't have any concluding remarks other than to say I, I really enjoyed as a consultant on this project and uh, being not only a part of LTD and, and working with the staff here, which has been wonderful, um, but also working with all of you and being a part of something that, frankly, as we've talked about, is unique. Um, not a lot of agencies do this. I don't know of any that have done it to this extent. And we were just trying to figure it out as we went along too, right? Because we didn't have a model for this. Um, and all of you were really helpful and supportive in that. And I think we're very respectful to each other, to us, to LTD staff. And that's what made this um, successful. And I've been part of a lot of community groups and organizations uh, and meetings where that's not been the case. Um, so thank you for your participation and for really putting in the effort, yeah. So. Really crazy idea, but yeah. right, it's all a crazy idea. So, I'm wondering is there a way we can educate um, those people that I call the lemon heads? And I know we had a couple in the meeting before, and so we're happy to. Um, is there a way to maybe get it educated more out there? I mean, LTVs are either amazing, but I mean, maybe. What does LT do and why it is so crucial for the community mm. and for many people out there in the community and why we get tasked? I mean, when my spouse worked for LT, we picked the task too when she worked for LT. I mean, it's only a snitch, but why is it important? And then um, if we didn't have certain things like that, if they what we'd be dealing with, and then we'd still complain. So it's like maybe getting more of that out there, and then um, yeah, just really highlighting the amazing work that LT does and how it benefits everybody. So then my crazy idea, is yes, totally my like I don't know, but it's just been totally weird. But I'm weird, so and um. <laughs> What about having like if these meetings continue like in the future or maybe even other board meetings? Um, have the members go out there and experience what it's like for different users of the bus. Like whether they're homeless and they're carrying a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. and they're in a wheelchair or a walker or they're blind or carrying a chair. I mean, the list goes on and on. So like a ride along. Yeah. Like actually yeah. see what it's like. Um I mean I don't think that's crazy at all. It's I think it's very much part of what the framework is getting at, right? In in how you guys designed it is because writers are at the top of that pyramid and because getting out there and being part of the system is a component of what LTD should be doing, there's nothing stopping us from thinking, okay, how are we gonna understand this perspective from this user? How are we gonna understand the perspective from this user? 
I think that fits very well with what we what we've been discussing for the last few months. And not just to go out, just to get on the bus, like okay, I'm gonna pull up the car right. and then take the wheelchair out or whatever. Right. But actually, like experience the whole thing, going on the sidewalk, right? Going from bus to bus, or if there is those, um, I, luckily I've never had experience it, but like if there's a reroute or whatever, like and they have to go a different way, each 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 each. and then there's like I guess. Stops that just really aren't accessible yeah. for even an able bodied person. Those kind of things, maybe they have to experience that. Um, I had someone in the community go around with me for Springfield teaching and she died in a wheelchair. And she actually was crying for one of us because of how she felt with the whole thing. Um, and it just was a lot for her emotionally mm -hmm. to have to experience what it's actually like. Um, so but I think even just you know, I just experience it like or going to the grocery shop or or spend and having to take a step of you and kind of mm -hmm. get the feeling and maybe some of those on the head for the head of the thing. See why it is so I mean there's no substitute for experience, right? You can tell people all day long until you really feel it yourself. It's fun. Thank you for that. Um, Pat or Dave, any final thoughts before we close out? I just want to say thank you. Um, Jason said that before, but you all did a lot of really hard work. And that was evident. And it was um, certainly evident for those of us that sat on the sidelines because we wanted to jump in and we were told we couldn't. And that was <laughs> true. I guess who cares what I have to say? We can hear what you all have to say. And, and, and can help us do a better job. What I can tell you is, is that how this framework comes out, we're committed to using it. We really are. And, and we really want to bring you all back. And I want to talk about this framework, but probably some other projects we're going to work on too. Because we need this. We need this feedback. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of people sitting in the back room with great ideas, you know, and we have to make sure we have the right great ideas. So I, I want to thank you for your time. I know it's a huge commitment. Those six meetings plus tonight. I mean, that's a lot of time to be away from uh, the folks you'd rather be with. <laughs> and we, we we really value your time and your expertise. And it's been for me, it's been a pleasure to get to know all of you. So so thank you very much. All right. Well, uh, we'll be we're talking to Pat and Dave after this and figure out any next steps and follow up. But thank you all so much again for coming back. All right. Can we do it for a picture? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs>